A new version of iPhoto is out that lets you edit pictures with your fingers. And we've got Special K herself, Kelly Barrett, joining us now from the Wall Street Journal in Washington, D.C. Fingers, great. Maybe four forks, as my mother said. So what, how, <laughs> tell us, this is, this is great. I'm excited. Yeah. So iPhoto has been the last holdout, the last uh, iLife piece of software that hasn't moved over to mobile. And now Apple has moved iPhoto over to the iPad and the iPhone. Um, they've introduced some new touch gestures that allow you to work with your photos. For example, there's a button that uh, you press that detects edges of one object. So if you're swiping your finger on the screen to change the color of an object or enhance the skin tone of someone's face, it will automatically detect where the face ends and where a background begins. So it's intuitive. It knows that you're using this on the go instead of sitting at a computer with a mouse and doing the editing. So Katie, do they know how fat my fingers are? I mean, I can barely type on the iPad. I'm afraid I would crop the head off of my kids' photos. <laughs> yeah. You know, Julie, I don't like the keyboard on the iPad either. I, I get really frustrated by using it for a long period of time. But I have to say, I really liked using this. Um, I was surprised. I was ready to write a, a review that said, you know, go back to your computer and do some serious editing. But they did a nice job with this. Um, they, they have some new touch gestures. For example, if you want to see any pictures that are similar to one another, so if you've ever taken a picture of your kid take, you know, blowing out his birthday candles, uh, seven different times and you don't want to have seven different pictures on your uh, in your album you can double tap on that picture and iPhoto will automatically find any other images that are like that picture so you can quickly see all of them and just throw away the ones that you don't want let's go back to the fat finger problem because I too have even fatter fingers than Julia well, I don't um, know we could compare well we can compare that I mean my, my hands are square I mean is this going to be a problem for for someone like me um, in, in editing this stuff I, I was surprised again like I said I think they they've realized that people are using their fingers here and they want you to be able to do more so they've they've retooled it they're not using the same gestures that you would use for other things they're not just using swipe or um, pinch to zoom, they have, uh, for example, there's a, a little magnifying glass that can appear on the screen. And you double tap with two fingers at the same time, and you'll automatically get this beautifully magnified vision of the image. Instead of having to pinch to zoom exactly at the right place, you can use this to be very precise. So, but you have to learn a little bit of a new set of gestures for this? Yes, yeah, yeah. there are a few new gestures here. So I, I added them in my column because it's not quite obvious exactly what to do. But there are some downsides to this version of iPhoto. So for example, you can't use it on the first generation iPad. So it only works on iPad 2 and the newest iPad. Uh, it does not work on the iPad iPod Touch. So if you have an iPod Touch and you want to use it, it doesn't work on the iPhone 3GS. Um, so, you know, there are some limitations to it. And it could do a little bit of a better job sharing. It has these really cool photo journals that allow you to make digital scrapbooks. But they really only share through email uh, using iCloud instead of directly sharing with Facebook or some other uh, photo networks that you might use. Okay, so uh, if maybe, maybe this is a reason to upgrade to, uh, to the new iPad. Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. I suggest everybody reads Katie's uh, review in today's paper. Thank you very much. Uh, special care herself, Katie Barrett with the Wall Street Journal.